It's easy to murmur and complain than it is to go forward, right? It's easier to murmur and complain than it is to go forward. It, it's easy for us to, to talk about this and that than it is to go forward. But God says, go forward. But listen to this. I wonder how many children today are on drugs and, and, and bound up by alcohol and bound up by sexual immorality because their parents were in church and they refused to go forward in God. I wonder how many today are bound up by those things because their parents refuse to go forward. I wonder how many people are bound up. Children are bound up because mama's relationship was with the body, not with Christ. Her relationship or, or his relationship was with their denomination, but not with God. I wonder how many lives have been hindered because they didn't see a real walk with Jesus. They didn't see a real uh, love for Jesus. All they seen was a bunch of stagnant religion, but I'm telling you, I believe people who are going forward as people that have a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Anybody agree with me? I'm not saying because our kids are not in the will of God that we didn't live right. Because Satan's after them too. But are they out of the will of God because we never lived right? Is that the question? Or is that, is that, is that the fact? But listen to me. Why should we go forward? Why is it that we should go forward in God? Because halting and lagging hinders those who are watching. Right? Halting and lagging hinders those that are watching. Whether we know it or not, this morning people are watching our life. People hear what we say. People know what we do. People know where we go. I'd hate to stand before God and someone tell me, why didn't you tell me about this Jesus? Why didn't you tell me about this God? Why didn't you? But, but, but you lived a life and that you, 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 you profess something, but you possess nothing. Amen. Yeah. Well, I tell you, it's getting quiet now. Thank you, Brother Daniel. <laughs> right? Amen. That's a soul Amen. of God. Halting and lagging hinders those who are watching. Amen. What do you mean, preacher? Give me a scripture, Matthew 23, 13. Matthew 23, 13 says this. Woe unto you, scribes. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. That's Jesus. Boy, I tell you what. He don't look so meek right there, does he? That's love speaking though, right? He said, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves... Neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Amen. In other words, you're standing at the gate. You're blocking the way. So, so our halting and our lagging behind hinders those who are, who are watching, who really want to get close to God. Yeah. And they see us with a real walk with God, a real relationship with God, a real love for God. Right? But listen to this. Matthew 23, 13, again, Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. You shut the doors, for ye neither go in yourselves. You're not going yourself, and neither suffer or allow you them that are entering to go in. But listen to this. Another question. What would have happened if, 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 if them on the front line had halted? What would have happened if them that had been on the front line had halted? What would have happened if, if Matthew had halted? Uh, uh, Luke had halted? John had halted? What would have happened if they had just had a, uh, the mentality, I'm not going forward in God. I'm saved. I'm satisfied. I'm on my way to heaven. Uh, I'm sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. What would have happened if Paul and, and all these boys had just, just halted? Those who were on the front line, those that gave their life so we can have this word, though what if they had halted? What if they had halted? What if they're, see, it's, it's a spirit of going forward. John the Baptist had that spirit. It's a, Peter had that spirit when he stepped out of the boat, stepped on the water. He'd rather be in a storm with Jesus than in a boat with a bunch of fearful folks. It was a go forward spirit. But what if the, all the disciples had halted? What if they had quit? I promise you this, this building would probably not even be on this property. Right? 
and it's a good chance that they had halted. But God put something in the hearts of some men and some women, and they said, I'll go forward. I don't care how bad it gets. I'm going to serve yeah. God. If mama quits, I'm still going to serve it. Yeah. If daddy quits, I'm still going to serve it. Yeah. If my wife decides to bail out, I'm still going to serve it. If my kids poke, poke out their tongue and their lips and, and get all frustrated and mad, I'm still going to serve Jesus. Come on, man. Yeah. So go forward. I'm still going to serve it. Amen. But what would have happened if them on the front line had halted? What would have happened if the, if the man or woman of God that won you to Jesus had halted in their walk with God? What would happen if they just stood back? What would have happened? What would have happened if they had just left me alone? What would have happened? What if they had just left you alone? Or those that won me, what if they had left them alone and halted? What if they had halted? And they didn't reach me. And then you didn't reach the ones that you've reached. Well, what about it? That's sober thought. What about this year? What about the guys we work with? What about the ladies that we work with? What about them that we work with? I mean, is, uh, is uh, us not willing to go forward in God? And, and it's all about just going to church a few times when we feel like it? It's, it, it that, that's, not, I, that's not enough. I wonder how many this morning just would not get up out of bed because they was up late last night because it was New Year's. Hey, listen, well, I was up late studying about 12.30 before I came in the house. It was probably around uh, 12.45 or whatever before I went to bed, something like that. And then when I get in the bed, we kept little Gracie last night. And man, I thought about her all night long as she breathing. That's our little great niece. And she was sleeping on the other side of Don, and I raised up, I'd look over there, and I'd see her breathing, and I'd feel over, and, and, and then, but I'll tell you, well, we can, we can have all kinds of excuses not to come to the house of the Lord, but I believe this is going to be a year where some folks are going to make up their mind, I'm going to be faithful. Amen. Amen. I don't need people to fill positions. I need faithful people to fill positions. I don't need musicians that's not faithful. I need musicians that will be faithful. Amen? Amen? I don't need teachers that come when they feel like coming because that disqualifies them if they're not interested in this. I need teachers that will show up every service. Yeah. Right? Amen. Unless they're sick or they're working. Right? Yeah. If, if you've got a loose leadership, you're going to have a loose church. Boy, that's preaching right there, man. Break it. That's just telling it like it is. Man, man. Come on with it. Praise the Lord. Let me Come on with it. I get a little slower as the I get. But what would happen if, if them that were on the front line had halted? What about the teachers and the pastors and the, and, and the preachers and the elders? But I want to ask us this this morning preachers and reachers. I want to ask this this morning for all of us. Uh, our elders, our leaders, our ushers, let me ask you, ask all of us this question. Are we lagging in God? Is it just consist of coming to church only? Or does it go outside these walls? Because what's done in here, amen, this is not going to benefit them out there unless we carry it to them, right? That's not going to benefit them until we carry it to them. Because we go back to work, and we go back to work on Tuesday. I go back Tuesday, and then I, I need to carry this same Jesus that's in here on to work with me. With, yeah. Amen? Yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. What if? What would have happened if them on the front line had halted? Teachers, preachers, pastors, elders. And the question I ask is, are we lagging? Well, what would have happened if you had halted at every bow? What would happen if you had halted in every battle? Every storm that rose in your life, what if you just quit God? I mean, what if? What if? I promise you this, to get to where I'm at today, sometimes I feel like I need to be farther, and it's not away from this ministry, because this is the ministry that God's got me in. 
But I'm telling you, I didn't get to where I was at, where I'm at right now, by, by lagging around. I didn't get to where I'm at right now by, by, by just giving up every time somebody rose up against me, giving up every time somebody said something about me, giving up every time somebody talked about my family, giving up every time somebody posted something on Facebook, giving up every time you see people out, they give you the cold shoulder, they're rude to you, and they scold you in a funeral home, and they jump on you in a funeral home, and they do this, they do that. If I give up at all that time, I promise you, I'd probably hit on a rock somewhere, but they didn't say.